investments today, which means that we're right into the deep of the Epiphany season. The last two Sundays, we have celebrated Epiphany, actually the last Sunday uh, and Monday before that, we've been celebrating the Epiphany, which is the season of manifestation or the showing forth of who Jesus Christ is. We began the season on Monday, January 6th, by looking at the coming of the three wise men, or the Magi, who came to worship Jesus Christ by the leading of that star. When they saw that it was Christ, they fell down and they worshipped him. And they represent for us the reality that it is the Gentiles who would also come and be under the dominion and kingship of Jesus Christ. We know that he, as the second person of the Trinity, not only fulfills the promise of God to be with the people of the Jews and to be their Savior, but is made manifest through that appearance to the Magi that he will also be the King of Kings and Lord of Lords for the Gentiles, those outside of the original covenant. Last week, we looked at the finding of Jesus in the temple at the age of 12, the fact that he was left behind by his family members. But the big reality of that manifestation was that even at the age of 12, Jesus understood his mission because it is who he is. He said, how is it that you did not know that I would be about my father's business? Jesus was drawn to be in the temple, to be among the leaders of the Jewish nation religiously because he wanted to be about his father's good work. He wanted to talk about his heavenly father because even at the age of 12, he understood, he comprehended that he was in fact God, the second person of that holy trinity. Today, we get the beginning of his public ministry. And remember, we only have one appearance of Jesus between his infancy and his public ministry, and that was last week's reading. Now we hear the beginning of Jesus' public ministry. He will begin from this point to be out in the world and proclaiming to the world the good news of God in Jesus Christ. And the beginning of that manifestation, that showing forth, is the public baptism that he receives at the hands of John the Baptist. Now it's important for us to remember that John the Baptist is doing something that was not uncommon in the Jewish religion. The idea of washing before coming to the Lord is a wonderful symbol. There are many places in the Jew in the archaeology, if you go to the Holy Land, where you see these ritual baths that have been placed outside of the places of worship where the temple was, up at Masada, if you get to go down to that wonderful place. You can see the excavations of the ritual baths. This understanding that you wanted to clean yourself before you come to the Lord. It's not uncommon even in today's uh, many Episcopal churches, as well as Roman Catholic churches, to have a holy water stoop at the entrance of the church so you can remind yourself of the ritual washing to be cleansed of your sins, a reminder of your baptism. Now John the Baptist's baptism we hear about it, and thank God for John the Baptist, we get to hear a lot about him, right? He appeared in Advent, because we talked about the coming of the Savior, and he announces the coming. We get to hear him again in Lent because he's all about sin, right? So he's talking about repentance of sin, so we'll see John the Baptist again in Lent. But we see him in Epiphany because he's an integral part of this manifestation story, this showing forth of who Jesus Christ is. And so it is that Jesus comes to the public place where people have been drawn for religious reasons and adds the new layer of what baptism would become. We hear that John was baptizing for the baptism of the repentance of sins. And the last person in the world who needed to be there for that reason was Jesus. There is no sin in Jesus Christ. He is human in every way except for sin, right? If he's God, he cannot sin. And then he comes to this public place of repentance in order to begin the fulfillment of this public ministry. One of the apostolic fathers writes, and I'm, I'm sorry I've been racking my brains trying to look up which one it was this morning. I should have Google it. It's on Google, right? But he said that in a way, Jesus does the opposite of what everybody else does. They come to be washed of their sins. Jesus is like the sponge 
judge who soaks up those sins in order to offer them on the cross. An interesting analogy. But the reason for Jesus' beginning of his public ministry in this place is because John the Baptist is the forerunner. He is the one who, from the moment of his conception, was brought into the world to announce the coming of the Savior. He points at Jesus. Behold the Lamb of God. Even when he was in his mother's womb and Mary came in to visit Elizabeth, John the Baptist leaps in his mother's womb to announce the coming of the Savior. It's who he is. It's his job. And so it is that he gets to see the fulfillment of all of his work in the person of his kinsman, Jesus. But the aha moment, that aha, there's the manifestation, is when Jesus comes straight way out of the water and we see a vision of God in the Holy Trinity. Anybody who claims to be a churchman doesn't believe in the Trinity, or any organization claiming to be a church that doesn't believe in the Holy Trinity is not really reading their Bible very carefully. Here is one of the primary examples. St. Mark begins his gospel with this public affirmation because we hear that at the moment of Jesus coming out of this representative washing for which he needs not be washed, we hear that the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove descends upon Jesus. And we hear that God the Father proclaims, This is my well-beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. This is my Son. Here we have in the voice of the Father, the person of Jesus, and in this Holy Spirit in the form of a dove, an image, a coming together, and a manifestation, a showing forth of God in the Holy Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, one God. We, during this Epiphany season, are looking at these various ways in which God is made manifest, in which we say, ah, there he is, because we need to be grounded in the faith. We need to be reminded again and again who Jesus is, that he is Lord in fulfillment of the promise to the Jews, that he is Lord in fulfillment that the people of the Gentiles would also come to him and worship, that he is Lord from even his infancy through his childhood when he understood in the temple that he must be about his father's business, and he is Lord as he begins his public ministry and is declared so as the Son of God as he comes out of the water. Next week, we get to talk about wedding parties and wine, but that's a whole other manifestation. Let us embrace and hold fast the truth of God in Trinity, so that we may be grounded in the truth of his manifestation, so that we can live it and show it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.